And you're welcome back to Off the Ball Saturday here on News Talk. John Duggan with you through until six o'clock. Now at half six, the All Ireland Senior Football Champions Tyrone begin their 2022 campaign against Fermanagh at Brewster Park in an Ulster preliminary round tie. Now joining us to look ahead is the former All Ireland winning captain with Tyrone and ex Fermanagh boss Peter the Great. Peter Canavan, great to see you. Great to talk to you, Peter. Hey, John. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, Peter. Um, looking forward to the, the summer of Gaelic Games and an amazing year for Tyrone in 2021, the All-Ireland. Maybe it would, might be fair to say a surprise, Sam Maguire. How are the hunger levels uh, since that now? Well, going on the National League performances, the, the hunger levels uh, haven't been great, to be honest. It was an up and down league campaign. We're thrown a very slow to get up and at it. And we had a fight. We had a win our last two games against Kerry and, and Mayo to, to stay up. So that was good. There was a good response near the end of it. So we're hoping we can kick on and, and get back to the sort of form we were in for you know the Ulster final, the semi-final final last year. But um, look, it's, it's Fermanagh. It's in their backyard. It's an all Ireland final as far as Fermanagh is concerned for them to, to, to take on and to beat Throne would be something else. So I don't think Throne would be taking them lightly. Yeah, the game is live on Sky, Peter, and you'll be doing all the analysis with Sky throughout the summer. And Fermanagh, like we all talk about the championship in provinces being a bit dead, but if you were to offer Fermanagh an Ulster championship, they'd bite your hand off because they've never won it. Absolutely. Um, they've got to a few Ulster finals and, and came close. And for them, yes, absolutely, just to, to win an Ulster title w- would be special. Um, they have a very small pick uh, in, in terms of players at their disposal. Um, the players down there are no more so than Throne or Monaghan or anywhere else. They take their football very serious. Um, they're very passionate about the, their football and representing their county. Um, so, look, absolutely for them um, to win an Ulster title would be something else. But if you speak to anybody in, in Fermanagh this past few weeks, this past few months, there's only one. They're not talking about winning Ulster titles. They're talking about beating Throne, and that's all they want to do. It's it's a massive game um, for for Mana. Kieran Donnelly, a man who I know very well, he was trainer when I was with um, for Mana. Uh, again, a, another very passionate um, for Mana man. He's got a real good team around him, and they've prepared very well. A lot of people expected them, John, to to get relegated. Um, because he was uh, bringing in a lot of younger players to, to, to give them their, their first experience of inter-county football. And they came very close, uh, only for a very poor refereeing decision uh, that, that cost them a point. They would have been pushing for, for promotion. So he's, he's knitting together a, a really promising squad there. And uh, this will be the big test for them now uh, this evening. And Sean Quigley, always a danger in the forward line, Peter. Yeah, in, in terms of scoring um, in, in recent years, uh, you only have to look at the stats and, and, and what Sean Quigley is capable of. And it's not just from free kicks. He's, he's a brilliant dead ball uh, kicker, but he's also scoring from play. And in terms of uh, being in around the square, there will be high balls put in, put in on top of the, the, the thrown full back lane and goalkeeper at, at various stages. And between him and Darren McGurn, they're well capable of... of Cause and thrown the thrown full back uh, full back lane plenty of difficulty, um, but Sean's a very experienced player, and certainly in terms of the free taken thrown, if they concede anywhere inside the forty five meter line, then you may as well be given a point away. So thrown would need to be very careful in, in, in that regard. Ryan Jones is also there, very experienced campaigner in, in the middle of the park, very good at coming forward, uh, leading late with Derry Gonley this year. So look, they have they've got powerhouses in in their team, and and Tyrone would be well wary of their threat. I'm just going through all the names here that are missing for Tyrone, like lads who've departed: Paul Donaghy, Ronan O'Neill, Mark Bradley, Lee Brennan, Turner McCann, Hugh Pat McGarry, and Michael Cassidy. Any of these departures a particular mm-hmm. blow, Peter, for Tyrone? You could argue all of them, John. They, right. Um, but looking on on recently on on last year and on Tyrone's run to winning the All Ireland title. Uh, a number of those players were, were very key. Um, every game, virtually, Tiernan McCann came on and seen action. Mark Bradley actually started the, the Ulster final against Monaghan. Um, Paul Donaghy came on and, and started games, came on in games. Um, and all, all to good effect. And the likes of Q-Pat, Michael Castle were there. Didn't see much action last year. Ronan O'Neill 
but were key players in, in years before that. So if you look, and I've said this many a time about, about Dublin and, uh, and their great run when they were winning all Ireland, the big games, it was their bench that got them over the line. So many big all Ireland semi finals, finals. The difference between them and their opposition was nobody could compete with their, the strength of their bench. And you only have to look at Throne last year and all of our games. The, we, we had strong, our bench made a difference. Cahill McShane, Dara was, uh, was coming off with a good effect. Paul Donnelly, Tierney McCann, massive difference. So we don't have that now. And uh, our bench is very much untested, uh, you know, in, in that regard. There's a number of younger lads probably will be there. And, and Brian or Fergus going to have to give them some game time. But you just can't guarantee that they're going to have the same in, impact as before. So to answer your question, apart from the absentees, the boys that, that have left the panel, we're, we're missing Peter Hart, we're missing Matty Donnelly, two of our most experienced players um, for this game as well. So Throner are definitely going in as, as a weekend force and Fermanagh will be well aware of that and, and would see this as a brilliant chance to, to try and crack them. Do you think they have a chance? Of course, it's it's a one-off and um, we had a chat night in our school and, and Holy Trinity College there during uh, during the week and we asked about teams not winning back-to-back teams that had won All-Ireland, why they weren't capable, Throne have never done it, Armagh weren't able to do it, Derry weren't able to do it and Kieran McGinney's answer as to why Armagh didn't was simply ego and you, you know, you can take uh, th- that as meaning a lot of things but the same question would be asked of Throne. Have these boys come back down to earth again after winning all Ireland? Uh, some of them, their form certainly hasn't been up to scratch in the league. Do they? Will they look down their nose at Fermanagh and see them as a Division 3? We're far better than these boys. Um, so if there's any sign of ego or complacency there, then for, for, absolutely Fermanagh have a chance. How did you manage Ego then, Peter, in 05 when you came back and won the All-Ireland and then in 08 with the other players who won it? Well, well, we didn't win it back-to-back, John, so you could say there yeah. was a bit of Ego there. Um, well, well, for us in, in 05, um, we'd lost our captain, Cormac McAnallan, the year before. So in, in terms of, for me and for so many others, that, that was a real motivating factor to, to, to do something in, in his honour. Um, I wasn't there in, in 08 but certainly winning an All-Ireland when you've been striving for, for so many years to do it uh, once you have it in your pocket th- there is a, there's a bit of edge away from your game and, and maybe that's natural but um, that's where good management comes in that's where uh, the leaders and in, in the team around and how motivated you are as an individual um, will soon find out and you only find that out when you know when you become unstuck, when you're in difficulty, when you're three points down going into the last you know three or four minutes of the game, that's what defines character. That's what we'll see how hungry they are there. But we'd like to think we have a very good setup and, and good men in charge. So we'd like to think that um, come championship, the thrones hunger and, and appetite will will certainly be there. Well, Brian certainly knows. Given he was involved in all three matches in 03, 05 and 08, Peter. You're a dad uh, watching on with Dara there. Like in 03, it was just yourself. You only had yourself to worry about. What's it been like the last year just watching your own son play and the journey that he's been on? Well, well during the game, it's much much easier playing, John, I can assure you. <laughs> um, because when you're out in the in the stands, uh, you can do absolutely nothing about it. Uh, it doesn't matter what you shout, say, do. Uh, it's not going to affect what happens on the, on the field of play. But look, you have to have confidence, and I do have confidence and respect them for what they're doing themselves. And uh, he loves the game. He loves playing for, for Throne and getting an opportunity to play for his county. So, look, he's enjoying every minute of it. Um, and he had, like anybody, he's good days and bad days. And I certainly, I had plenty of them too. So I'll not be too critical one way or the other. And... Uh, like my own father, he didn't let me get too carried away with myself, so I'm sure that doesn't happen here either, but um, you're, you're quite right, it can be difficult at times, uh, and, and some of the nonsense you have to listen to in, in the stand at times, be it good or bad, uh, you just have to ignore, turn a blind eye, but um, I'm getting well used to that. It's a bit like Fight Club, um, is it that ca- the case at home that you maybe sometimes just don't talk about it? 
don't talk about the football? Absolutely. Uh, I don't. And the boys will tell you that themselves. The The last thing I wanted when I was playing, coming home after a tough game or maybe having a bad game, maybe losing, was to have a full investigation and to start talking about it. I, I know what it's like. You're not you're not ready for it then. So when they're ready to talk, I'm ready to listen. Um, so there's very, they're definitely not getting... Uh, an abundance of information being fired at them about what they should have done or what they can't. Uh, you know, I'm a teacher myself. Um, um, I'm coaching a lot of teams and I see uh, parents and um, what they can do to uh, parents that, that are playing, the, their sons or their daughters are playing the games for them instead of letting them play them for themselves. And it can have a detrimental effect on relationships. So I'm very wary of that and, and I know it's, it's, it's not happening here. So look, they're, they have to get on with it and have to enjoy it themselves uh, the best they can. And at, at the end of the day, it is a game. It's only a game. Yeah, and your, your son-in-law as well, Peter Hart, on the, on the panel as well. He said he's injured at the moment. Um, just looking beyond uh, Tyrone and Fermanagh this evening, Peter, Kerry, Jack O'Connor's back. Paddy's Pally's there now working on the defence. Uh, do you get the sense that the defence has been fixed to put them in a position where they have the platform now with the forwards they have to be favourites to win the Sam Maguire? Absolutely. If you had a blank canvas and just going around and having a pick of whatever team you want on pure football and ability, um, Kerry stand out. They have the key players and, and moving forward. There was questions asked about them last year in terms of possibly midfield and, and their defensive capabilities. Going on the National League, yeah, there's been improvement there. Um, whether that's down to, to Paddy, you know, any defensive work or shape uh, Paddy gets the credit for Paddy works on a lot of aspects of the game it's not just defensive work so uh, he, his addition will be a massive help to carry moving forward in a lot of areas so I would agree with you that they're the team they're the team to beat I wouldn't read too much into the, the National League final because I think Mayo weren't up for it they had their, their mind set on, on other things and, and, and Kerry blew them away I don't think that was a, a true reflection of either Kerry or Mayo but um, when you have a team of Potty Clifford David Clifford Sean O'Shea to begin with as a spine up front uh, and a lot of decent players behind them absolutely if they can hold themselves together they are they're the form team and they're the team to beat how good can this guy be, David Clifford, in Gaelic games? It, like when we're, we're talking about the next few years, we don't want to put him under pressure. I suppose we are by talking about him, but he is how something good, else. How good can he be, John? How good is he now? <laughs> what, what more do you want out of him? Well, uh, where I'm um, talking about, like we're talking about the greats of, of all time here, you know, like potentially. Well, the only thing he's missing, and, and you know what they're like down in Kerry, until he wins in All-Ireland, a lot of people will have question marks about him, probably. But he, he, he look, virtually every game he plays, even a quiet game, you know, he still does two or three brilliant things or sets up or wins frees. So he's, I dare say he's, he's a freak, you know, he, he's for such a big man, like he's over six foot, yet he moves and turns and twists. You know, he's so agile that, you know, defies logic in, in, in many regards. He can win his own ball, high ball, put in defenders, try and mix it with them. There's no point. He's too strong for, for a lot of them and, and he gets on with it. So right, left foot, he can score goals. He can, you know, he's got he's got everything um, to his game. And the only thing that, that he knows that he needs to get his hands on now is an all iron medal. And whenever he does that, I think, you know, I think it applies to so many footballers. Whenever you win something, uh, it imbues you with, with confidence you know you're good enough uh, you've got that medal and it, it could quite possibly take his game to another level uh, how he can do that I'm not too sure but he, he's a joy to watch uh, at the minute and unfortunately for Throne and so many other counties um, if they're going to win uh, major honours they're going to have to get the better of them the way you're talking, Peter, it's almost like, and you weren't too bad yourself. Uh, this is the best guy you've seen in the forward line for a long time. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and and it's not just when you throw him in with Kerry, John. Um, oh, he's with a good team. Just play him up front. He's getting plenty of ball. It's easy for him and Sean O'Shea and Potty's putting it on a plate for you. 
just watch some of the university games that he's played. Go back to the minor games that he's you know he's played. Every time he's on the pitch, there's there's excitement. You would watch you'd watch a game if he was playing, be it college club or whatever, because you're you're going to see quality. I was down in um, Killarney for for the National League game, and it was up in the in the terrace for a point that he scored in the first half, and he kicked it maybe twenty yards to the left of the post, and knowing that the breeze was was was, was going to carry it in, and when he kicked it, you could nearly hear the crowd shouting "ooh" or "oohs" and "ahs" as if he had misheaded it, but he actually bent it, you know, round. So he's he's just uh, a joy to watch and. Uh, that irks me maybe as a thrown man to have to say that but and even last year when thrown did play them uh, Ronan McNamee you know did really well on him but David Clifford still scored you know four or five points he still made a massive uh, contribution to 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 Kerry so uh, if he stays at it absolutely he's he's there's I can't see any reason why over the next year or two that he's not going to lead Kerry uh, to an all Ireland title the Dubs, uh, Peter, look, a lot of players have retired. They got the six in a row. So there's a, like, do they need to do anything ever again? Possibly not. Some of the players, uh, Desi Farrell has obviously, you know, taken over from Jim Gavin, won the All-Ireland, but he's there sitting duck for criticism. But could Dublin be doing better than they are, I suppose, is the question I would have. Uh, probably. Yes, without a doubt, they're a Division One team. So they shouldn't be in... And playing Division Two next year, so they should be doing better than than they are. Um, they've got to this stage now, and I mentioned this many a time before that I was waiting on this to happen after the one two in a row or three in a row, because no one having won all Ireland and seeing the effect it has. We spoke earlier about ego and about players not having uh, the same fire in their bellies to come out and, and do it again. Um, players getting softer for, for want of a better word whenever you have the medals in, in your pocket there's no signs of that for, for years under under Jim Gavin and th- that to me was remarkable but um, yes that they, they always had the quality footballers so now for the first time really you could say you could see signs in a few players that they weren't that overly pushed that uh, they looked happy with their lot and and that's Remarkable considering they've won so so much. But what this has done now, I think, in terms of ammunition and in terms of motivating his troops, Desi Farrell doesn't have too far to go to to source that information to get it. It's there in front of him. Uh, a lot of people are writing off individuals in the Dublin team. A lot of people are writing off the panel of players. A lot of people are writing off Desi Farrell and suggesting that he should go. So, in terms of uh, motivation and and coming up against a wounded animal, I would be very careful for with uh, if I was a team in Leinster, and I would I expect them to win Leinster again. And as far as I know, if things go to plan, it's a monster um, Leinster All Ireland semi final, so that'll be Kerry and and Dublin. So uh, you mean to tell me that you think Kerry is going to steamroll Dublin in an All Ireland semi final? So yeah, yes, they've been disappointing. At times, they came up to Oma and they were blue thrown away. They were really a game they were really up for. So I, I would be very wary that uh, of, of Dublin. I still believe there's more in them. And you're going to see that in, in the championship. Plus, Conor Callan hasn't played any football for them. This And what, what a target man, what a f- uh, focal point he is um, in terms of that squad as well. So uh, write them off at your peril. We've spoken about the All Ireland champions, Tyrone, Peter. We've spoken about Kerry. We've spoken about Dublin. Who are the best of the rest? So Mayo now have uh, challenges in Connacht with Goin, Ross Common resurgent. You have Armand, Donny Gall, and Ulster. Derry are doing well. Monaghan part of the conversation. How do you see the other counties in terms of challenging later in the season? Well, first of all, Tyrone winning it last year, I think, will certainly imbue teams with confidence that here, if Tyrone were able to win it from where they were last year. What's the difference? You know, if Galway had to play a throne last year in, in, a, in a championship match, they would definitely wouldn't have feared them, would have been expecting to win. Likewise, Donegal, Monaghan, there's always a, a point or two between them. There's no difference. So all these teams now believe that uh, if they can add something different to their st- or strengthen their panel, that they're capable of going places. So I think that will add that there's a lot of teams coming in with confidence. 
in, in Ulster in, in particular, it's it's wide open. Um, you've seen the performance of that Monon put in against Dublin. They've got quality players. Their bench is getting uh, stronger as well. And they would see it before Conor McManus retires. I'm not suggesting that he is, but you know they'd want to get a kick out of this team, knowing that they've had one of their greatest ever players. And Bonte's throwing everything at it. Donegal, again, personnel wise, uh, they're they have underachieved in in Ulster the last two or three years. I think um Armagh drawing them into the battle and, and things getting messy at the end of the game might just stoke their fire enough to get them over the line. And if, if Donegal do beat a um, uh, resurgent Armagh team, then I think it's Calvin or Antrim they would play. They'd be expected to win that. So Donegal, if they get over Armagh, and I, I think they will, are in an Ulster, or should be in an Ulster final. And the other, the other half of the draw, you have, you have Monon and Throne. Throne just with the players they're missing and with key players not performing well. Uh, I'm not going into the Ulster Championship overly confident, to be honest. Um, possibly a backdoor way in could could be more beneficial to Throne have, rather than having played four tough games in, in Ulster. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a donegal Monaghan ulster final and that, that could go either way. And in terms of other teams, I wouldn't be writing off Derry. They're in the way up under Rory Gallagher, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. And it's a three-way battle, Mayo, Roscommon and, and Galway. Mayo have, have their performances in the league for the amount of players that James Horne has, has tried out. has been They've been very consistent and... That has surprised me. I thought they would have struggled without key players in, in this summer. So he has a stronger panel there. And it's a one-off. Galway have the firepower up front to, to beat Mayo. So I'd say definitely a 50-50 call, call. And Roscommon sitting quietly in the wings waiting to get at them in the final. So maybe though on the basis of what we said, you think Kerry are the favourites and, and a dark horse for you for the 2022 season if it's not your own county? Um. Yeah, well, I've, I've already mentioned Donegal. Um, I've, I've been tipping them for a few years and, and they've underachieved. I still think they've got serious um, uh, potential and, and, and a great leader and, and Michael Murphy. And a wee bit like Monaghan, they want to get the most out of him um, before you know the years get up on him too much. So um, Monaghan... I wouldn't write them off. So dark horses would, would be either Donegal or, or Monaghan. And just to finish, Peter, uh, it's great to have the championship back. To me, it's a little bit squeezed, I would have to argue. I know why they're doing it because of the club game. We're in April. We have the football championship back. It'll be over by July. But, you know, the weather's getting better. This is what it's all about. This is what we live for. The the, the thrills and spills, the, the days out on a Sunday or a Saturday evening like today and uh, win it all Ireland like you did last year. It sounds very simple, John, but uh, absolutely, it's, <laughs> it's, it's great great to have it back. I, I would agree with you, even putting back two weeks, because we had seven rounds of the National League, and the first six of those was played in, in deplorable conditions. I know the games that I was at, it, it was shocking. Games of two half, halves, in a lot of cases, ruined by, by, by the weather. So, yeah, even starting the league a couple of weeks later and, and letting the championship run into... Uh, the start of middle August would, would definitely be a big help moving forward and still gives plenty of times for time for, for clubs to finish their, their county championships. All right, Peter. Well, enjoy it. Uh, best of luck with Sky. Uh, enjoy for Man of Tyrone this evening. May the best team win. And uh, we'll hope to speak to you throughout the rest of the summer. Thanks a million, John. Chat soon.